welcome to episode 24 of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and I am coming to you from Paper Crane Yarns, which is my yarn store located in Central Alabama, USA. Um, and Paper Crane Yarns is also my hand dyeing yarn business. So I am a dyer, a project bag maker, and I own a yarn store where I carry lots of other amazing um, brands and makers. Uh, so today is February <laughs> It's Saturday, February 25th, 2023, and um, yeah, so it's been a couple months since I recorded a, a real podcast. Uh, my last episode was my roundup of makes from 2022. I think I did that in early January or so. So it's been more than a few months, I think, since I've actually been here and had the time to do this. Um, reason being, I have a very active, almost seven-month-old daughter, and she has been so mobile and um, she's into everything. Um, so this has not been possible except for finally in this exact moment. Um, I'm just an hour and a half out from opening the store for the day. I'm having a sale this weekend, so I'm expecting to be busy. <laughs> Hopefully I can wrap all this up. I have far too much to show you in terms of what I've been knitting and um, things I've been buying to knit more things with. You know how it goes. Okay, so I'm, I think I'm going to just jump straight into all of my makes because I expect this to be a long episode, which I tend to do anyway, but let's go ahead and just do this, shall we? Um, so I have quite a few finished objects, which is what I'm going to start with because I have more of those than anything else. And I think that's usually how I do it. I don't know. We'll start with what I'm wearing. This is my favorite knit. It is amazing. Um, this is the No Place Like Gnome Sweater by Martina Muscova. Yes, Martina Muscova. Um, this is a modified version just slightly, but I really love it. So I'm going to stand up and show you and then we'll talk all about it. Um, and I'm wearing a, a skirt with tree frogs on it. <laughs> Okay, so a pretty epic sweater, right? I knew I needed to make this sweater, of course, when I first found the pattern on Ravelry. I love gnomes, as I'm sure many of you do. Anything garden related, <clears throat> anything garden related is perfect for me. So I knit this sweater using my No Place Like Gnome, my No Place, using my hand dyed gnome collection. It was a bundle of five mini skeins. They're all a fingering weight, a sock yarn. Um, I dyed them because I love gnomes and I just wanted to do that. This is the art that my husband made for my labels for the mini skein bundle that I released. It's really amazing. <laughs> Obviously I kept, I stuck with sort of the original like light blue and red theme for the gnomes on my sweater so I asked him to include that with the illustration and mushrooms which I included on the sleeve my paper crane uh, yeah he he did a fantastic job he has a degree in art so that's something he spent a lot of time uh, the skill practicing um, yeah welcome to my podcast where my sentences are always out of order um, and I went to school for linguistics so I have no excuse except for I get my, my brain moves faster than my mouth sometimes. So anyway, that's why I'm always such a jumbled mess. So the, so yes, so all of the color work for the most part, except for like the brown, um, are from my gnome collection mini skein bundle. And then the pink, the, the main color for the sweater is from Knit Picks. It's their tw uh, twill fingering. And I think it's, yeah, Rosewater Heather. This is 183 yards per 50 grams. Um, it's a very soft pink shade. This stuff is amazing. It didn't feel at all how I expected. And I think this colorway might be discontinued. I'm not sure if they have any left, but it was discounted when I bought the yarn and the other colors weren't. So it might be going away. It was very, very inexpensive, only a couple dollars for a ball. Um, so the last time I recorded a podcast and I was talking about making the sweater, I couldn't decide what to do as my main color. The pattern 
Um, she uses yellow, like a bright primary yellow for the main color. And I think all of, almost, almost all of the projects that I saw on Ravelry did the same. Um, but I knew I probably wanted pink, so I, I went with pink. And I'm very happy with the decision. I did make a few modifications to the pattern itself. Um, I should say, mention that I knit the size 5 and I used the recommended needle size. Um, this is a size inclusive pattern. All of the patterns that I talk about today are size, size inclusive. I knit the size 5. I want to say there are 15 total sizes. So there's lots of I, I think the smaller sizes you could even knit for children if I remember. It's been a few months now um, since I finished this back in early January, I think, is when I did it, some, somewhere around then. Um, so the other modifications that I made, though, I waited to split for my sleeves until I was completely through this sort of main, I think this was one entire chart up until this second fence, and she wants you to separate for the sleeve somewhere in here. Obviously, there's a lot of um, extra space here. I wanted a drop shoulder kind of look, so I waited to separate until the entire yoke was done for the upper the upper portion and I did not do any decreases for the sleeves until I got to the very end so um, this this part of the sleeve has no decreases the sleeves are meant to be a little bit more of um, an actual fitted sleeve I got down to about the bracelet length or so and I added a color work chart here this is um, some mushrooms and the chart is from Stone Knits. I knit some of her mittens which I'll show later but I used the same mushroom pattern from her Magic Toadstool mitten pattern um, and I added that to the sleeve cuff. Um, so if you want to knit the sweater and make that modification I would buy the one of the Toadstool patterns from Stone Knits maybe and add in the mushrooms. So I had to decrease a couple of stitches just to have the stitch count match up for the chart. Um, so I did that. And then after I finished the chart, I did a rapid decrease. I think I did knit two together all the way around, something of that nature. I, I, I should have put notes on Ravelry. I think I did, if you want to check. And then I just did my cuff. So now I have these really cute balloon sleeves. I think it adds to the cottage appeal of this sweater. Um, it looks really cute under pinafores and things that are, you know, they emphasize like the billowing nature of the sweater. I did go with a size that would give me positive ease just to keep it again that really flowy cute kind of style so it it doesn't sit on my body um oh okay yeah <laughs> so other modifications that i made i think everything for the motifs is to pattern until here and then let's see so the strawberries were part of the pattern this portion i think was supposed to be pears but i added foxes so hopefully you can see that. And that's because, well, A, of course I wanted some foxes. I feel like they're suitable for my garden um, design here. <laughs> and I had an orange mini skein in my my gnome collection that was Friend of the Fox. And so I, I wanted to use the orange. And so I, I knit some foxes. And I found that chart on a website called Chartminder. But I, I will say I'm I'm not totally sure. So the chart that I found had it was a fox and the full body i stopped the chart at the shoulders because i didn't want the fences to be drastically far apart when they were evenly spaced otherwise i could have done the whole fox but it would have been down to here and that would have made the fence very strangely placed so i only did the head to the shoulders of the fox um i will say after so i'd never used chart minder before i was just kind of looking for free fox or not even free but just fox charts for knitting i came across this one on chartminder and it was free but after i used chartminder for a little while i saw i i saw and i don't say this to tell you to go look at it i say to not go look at it i found charts like for this sweater just paid chart patterns that people had put on chartminder and made them free and so i'm a little bit worried that i might have taken this chart from a designer who was selling this pattern. If you recognize this fox, please let me know so that I can maybe go and buy that pattern and show support since I used a free version. Um, yeah, I, I hated that I came across so many charts that were designers work and 
you know, some, sometimes people give these things away for free, but they're selling it because they put all this work into it. So anyway, I feel bad like this may have been some designer's pattern. And if not, and if somebody just designed it and put it on there, then that's fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's my little spiel about that. I also, so the watering cans are true to the pattern. The pattern has you just do an outline for the watering can, but I filled mine in all the way. It's the same blue from my gnome. And sorry if you can hear my boots squeaking. I just noticed they are. And then finally, this row was meant to be flowers, but I did chickens instead. Um, again, a pattern I found on Chartminder that now I'm not so sure if that was somebody's chart or not. Um, so if you recognize it, let me know. Although it could be even a stone knits chart. And if so, I need to double check. I, I have her charming color work sock book, which has a chicken, uh, chicken chart, <laughs> a chicken chart in it. And maybe this is that chicken. So maybe, maybe I'm good there, but yeah. So that's my no place like gnome. I could go on about this sweater forever. Um, I will say I have already worn this time and time again. I wore this at my one year anniversary party here at my shop. I wore this at the, I, I vended at the Bitty Knits fiber pop-up, a fiber arts pop-up in Atlanta a few weeks ago. I wore this then. I have worn this a lot and I was worried if I didn't go ahead and wear it and show you, you wouldn't get to see it nice because it's already pilling. That's my only complaint with this, this main uh, color, this nitpicks fingering twill. It's pilling um, a good bit like kind of uniformly. So not really in any particular area. So I think that means it probably would have just happened regardless, but um, yeah, I'm not sure it's, it is, I'm going to have to depill this one. I've never had to do that with the sweater, but this one, this one, I'll have to do that. So that's my no place like gnome. I highly recommend this pattern. If you have your eye on it, I say go for it. <laughs> okay. So the next finished object that I will show you is probably the oldest one in this bunch. I finished this last year, at the end of last year. Um, and if you watched my recap video, then you've already kind of seen it. And I sort of briefly talked about the fact that I will not be wearing this. Um, I'm going to talk about it and then I'll try it on and show you why. And the ends aren't woven in because again, I, I can't wear this, so I'm in no hurry. So this is the Herbalist Swancho by Olga Putano. Olga Putano is one of my most favorite designers. She does pr almost exclusively color work. She has beautiful color work and that's my favorite way to knit. I love to knit color work and um, I really love these Swancho designs that she has. They are beautiful. I think they're very flattering. Um, yes, 10 out of 10. So this is one of, I think this might be the first Swancho she created and I've had my eye on it for a while. Um, I knit her cottage Swancho first and then I decided to do this one. Um, with a friend, my friend Tammy, who comes to my knit nights, she, we, we decided to knit it together. Um, and it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It looks perfect. Like how she designed it. There's no issues. Um, the color work is gorgeous. I mean, look, it's got bumblebees and, um, they, these are supposed to be vines with leaves and I used to not be able to see it, but now I totally do. So there's like roses and then there's leaves and this might be a trellis or something. And then of course there's all of these down here. And then there's this little like gilded, um, detail underneath these pillars. So it's beautiful. And the fiber content is amazing. This is my hand dyed yarn. This was on like a experimental base that I don't regularly carry. It is cashmere, silk, and alpaca. So this is the softest thing I've ever felt. It is amazing. Truly. It's, it's really beautiful. And the drape is wonderful. Um, even though it has a silk content, it doesn't really have a sheen to it, but it does have a little halo from, uh, the alpaca. You can kind of see it. So I had three colors and, um, I did the smallest size. Now the size, this sweater pattern only had three sizes, but there's a lot of ease built in. So that's why I would still consider this to be a size inclusive pattern. She has since released, released another swan show I'll show that has more size options. Um, but yeah, so I knit the smallest size. So <laughs> where did it go wrong? The experimental yarn that I was using is a DK weight. I think it was like 240 or so yards per hundred grams. I would call that a very true DK weight. Um, I have since started to do gauge swatches or at least test my gauge as I progress in a project. Um, and I'll talk about that more later, 
But when I knit this, I did not test my gauge because my thought process, I'd already knit one swancho and my thought process was this is the same designer and it might have even been the same needles size, something like that. And I was thinking, well, this is a pattern that has ease. So if it's a little too small or a little too big, no problem because it's meant to be, you know, not fitted, not tailored. Um, but it turns out the gauge, so I measured my gauge after I knit the whole sweater, tried it on and realized it didn't really fit. Turns out the gauge for this yarn is like a fingering weight um, gauge. Like there was a drastic difference between the called for gauge and the the gauge that I ended up with, which was really sad because this is a very luxurious um, fiber and a beautiful sweater that I have been wanting badly for it since it came out. I remember when it was released and I wanted it since then. Um, so I'll try it on real quick and show you kind of how awkward it is. Okay, I'm going to start from a standing position. Okay, you know, it doesn't look too bad. Here's the back. But from the side, it's very unflattering. <laughs> and this is as high as I can lift my arms. Now, with the cottage swancho, because there's that springy merino yarn, um, when you lift your arms, the whole sweater comes up, and that's to be expected because where the sweater starts, because it's a swancho, there's only like a little inch or two of ribbing uh, of sweater underneath the sweater, uh, the arm. So it should do that. But because I think, I think what the issue here is, the silk content in this yarn makes it a lot less flexible because it's very strong. So even though the alpaca is really soft and normally has a lot of give, um, the silk is really restricting it. The other thing is the color work chart has very long um, gaps between colors. So you can see, you know, this yellow and this yellow, there's something like probably 15 stitches in between here. Um, so your floats end up being quite long and you really have to work on catching them. But, and while that's no problem, you have to make sure that you're trying to keep them eased also so that when you put it on, it's not really tight. And I remember the night that I finished this and I bound, I, I bound off all of the ribbing on the sleeves and everything and I was ready to try it on. I tried to put it over my shoulders and I couldn't even do that. So I ended up doing something really crazy that you all will probably kind of shudder when I say I took the sweater and I held it open until I heard something pop. <laughs> and that was all it took. There was like one yarn strand that I couldn't find buried under all the floats that was far too tight. So I just let it pop. Now I've tried this on over and over and I nothing has come loose. So I'm not sure what the deal is, what exactly gave, but something gave. And now I can at least get it over my shoulders, but it doesn't stay. And um, clearly it looks quite strange, especially from the side view. It's not good. <laughs> so my plan is, um, because I think that this is a child size swancho. I mean, there should be 20 inches of ease and it is right up against my arms. So it's very awkward. It's a very beautiful sweater. Again, the yarn content's gorgeous. So my plan is, I have a seven month old daughter, just about seven month old. Um, one day this will look beautiful on her. So I'm going to hang this up in her closet. And when she's a little bit older, she has a very luxurious, beautiful sweater to look forward to. Um, so it's not a loss. It's just that I'm preparing for many years down the future, <laughs> uh, down the line. So that's my, my, my tale of woe with my herbalist swancho. If I were to knit this again, um, a, I would check gauge. <laughs> But B, I think I would also, I had to unleash my arms. I think I will also knit the second size because um, other people who knit this pattern did say on the Ravelry pages that the size one ended up being like a child size, even when they did get gauge. So um, I do think that for me, and I am, I'm not like a tiny person, but I'm a small person and the, yeah, the first size, if you were to knit this, I would say maybe, maybe think about going up a size from your normal, what you, what range you would normally feel comfortable knitting in. You might, you might enjoy that. Now at the Cottage Swan Show, the first size was perfect if, if not even like slightly too, too much ease. So yeah, just play around with it. I do 
wholeheartedly recommend this pattern and all of Olga's patterns, but this one gave me some trouble. <laughs> now, since we're talking about Olga's swanchos, let's move on to something absolutely perfect in my eyes. This, this swancho is just gold. Um, I'm very happy with the way this one turned out. Let me drink some coffee now that it's cooled down. I have some, this is coffee that I roasted, the beans I roasted, and I've made this with fresh grated nutmeg and cinnamon, um, and it's just black coffee, but again, there's, there's spices. But look at this cute little mug. I got this at the local vintage shop that's pretty much next to my, my store. And um, it's so cute. There's geese with tulips on the back and a tiny pond. Um, apparently this, even though this is a, now I don't know what years these, these were produced. I don't think it says. Apparently this is very popular and common and easy to find. And uh, many, many of you have this as well. So if you have anything from this collection, let me know. Um, the mugs are so cute though. I, I want to live in the pink cottage. It's my dream is a pink cottage. Okay, the suspense is over. You guys, is this not the most beautiful sweater you've ever seen? This is the Sunny Swancho um, by Olga Patano. And I tested this for her back in November or December, somewhere around then. I think the pattern was released in December. Um, this was one of the quickest knits I've ever done because I couldn't put it down. It's color work, it's DK weight, it's beautiful. Um, and I knew I wanted to get the test done, of course, because I would never want to let Olga down. I just love her. She's great. <laughs> um, so yes, my, I don't know what else to say. It's my Sunny Swancho. Um, this is the, her newest Swancho that was like a self-published pattern. She has a couple of other Swanchos that I think Lane Magazine, she, she published them in somewhere else. Um, oh, and she has a book coming out, by the way. And if you think I'm not getting that book, you're totally wrong. It is called Only Yoking. I'm all over the place. It's been a while. It's called Only Yoking, and it's top-down. I think they're all top-down um, yoke. Like, that's the theme of the sweater. There's um, lace yoke, textured yoke, color work yokes, of course. Um, anyway, Only Yoking. She's releasing it in April. I can't wait to get it. I need to figure out how to carry it in the shop. I don't know. Um, okay, so about the the Sunny Swancho, because I know you all love it and want to know. It's DK uh, weight yarn, and most of them are my hand-dyed yarns. Um, this, okay, so I'll start from the top. My, my main color, the blue here, is blue velvet. That's one of my favorite colorways that I dye. I had a customer very kindly tell me that this colorway glows on the skein, which I thought was so sweet. And so that's how I think of it now. So um, yeah, my main color is blue velvet. Then this gold color, since that's next, this is actually lambstrings yarn. Um, this was my main color in my cottage swan show. So it was fun to be able to carry it over to this project. I had a little bit left over of one of my skeins. So I incorporated it here for my sun rays and, or there, yeah, just, really beautiful. I think it played together with my palette super well. So I'm glad I had that on hand. Um, oh, and that's called Apothecary is the colorway. One of my favorites. It's a gold color with a touch of like a green hint to it. And there's little bits of pink and very cute. So then the white is just an undyed uh, Merino DK. And I call that origami. Um, so that's just the undyed merino. And then this color is my Aura colorway. It's a little bit more saturated than on some bases because this one is blue faced Lester uh, DK. So there's a little bit more of like a slight, slight toothiness to it. Um, the color is usually a little bit deeper. Uh, so yeah, that one is really beautiful too. My favorite colorway. So here we go. It looks great with my frog skirt. <laughs> And this is from the back, from the side. See, from the side, this one looks much cuter than the herbalist. And I love the way that it moves and let me just be silly, the internet. Um, yeah, I'm, oh goodness, I'm sorry, my chair is quite loud. I never think about that. One time when I first started podcasting, somebody commented that I needed to 
I think they said to oil my chair or get a new chair or something. And I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it, oh goodness. Now that's all I can think about. It makes noise. I apologize. One day I'll have a different chair. Actually, maybe I'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. That's my Sunny Swan Show. There we go. I'm quickly running out of time. Um, it's already 9.07. My shop opens at 10 and I feel like I have a lot to show you. So I'm going to keep trying to go fast, but please, if you have questions about any of my makes, I know I'm not giving the most detail. Please leave me a comment or, or whatever you need to do. If you have a question, go to my Ravelry, Paper Crane Yarns, everything's linked below, um, or my Instagram page. And you can probably find more details there. But again, let me know if I forgot anything. So continuing with my Olga streak, <laughs> this is another Olga Patano designs pattern. And this one is called Mosaica Sweater. And she says, Mosaika is the Ukrainian word for mosaic, and um, I thought that was perfect. I know that one of her followers on Instagram helped to name this pattern because she ha she put a post up before it was released and asked for name suggestions. She said whoever's whoever name whoever whoever <laughs> provided the name that she picked, she was going to gift them a copy of the pattern. And I recommended the stanza sweater because each block of color work, it's almost like a stanza of poetry. And I told her that I think her, her designs are like poetry. So I think that would have been a good contender, but Mosaica is also beautiful. That was a, a good pick. I'm glad she went with that. Um, so th this is Mosaica and I bought a kit from Lavender Loon. It's still available the last I checked on Lavender Loon, their website. Um, it's a, it's dyed to order. So it, it took a while to get here. Um, she, I think she was also moving and had a lot of stuff going on. So it might not take as long if you were to order it now as it did when I ordered it, but it was worth the wait. It's very beautiful. Um, and then she's got, I think there's one other colorway kit option. It was greens and gray and like a burgundy color. Very beautiful, be beautiful. So this is a three color color work design. This was the main color. Um, I don't think, I don't think I have the ball band. Um, I will link to this kit below, but this is a, I think it's an Aran weight. Um, again, this is the main color. I don't remember what this is called. I'm sorry, you guys. I am feeling very flustered. I don't get much time to myself because of having a baby in the shop. So I, I wasn't able to really prepare, but it's beautiful. It's a teal color. Um, it is a it looks like it's a two ply. I know that it's not just one type of fiber. I want to say there's alpaca in here and some others. There's like a slight haze to it. Okay. I need to take a deep breath. There's like a slight haze to it. It's really lovely. Um, very springy. And I had maybe half of a skein left. There were three total skeins that came with this. And then you got one each of your other colors. This is her cotton fluff, their cotton fluff base. So it's cotton and mohair and I think wool. Um, and this is really lovely. Um, so this pattern, you hold the yarn, um, these yarns double. These are definitely not like a Surrey alpaca or mohair kind of weight. They're thicker than that because it's got like the cotton fiber and whatnot. Um, but she did have you hold it double for I think it was meant to be like a worsted or Aran weight strand. Um, I have a ton of yarn left over, so I only got one skein of each for this pattern. And um, this one, it's a little bit lighter. This is this is probably not a ton. I mean, I can I can definitely make a substantial project with this. This feels like almost a whole skein. It this pattern really didn't call for much. Um, this is shy away is the colorway, and this is foxy. Now, if I could just remember the teal, which I won't. Walker. I do have it with me. Okay. It's 80% superwash merino, 20% baby alpaca, 191 yards to hundred grams worsted weight. That's the main color. Look at that. So that's my yarn for Moseka. It's really lovely. I knit the size two. I'll stand up and show you. So this one, it's slightly cropped, but not too much. My belly button is here and it comes, so it comes down just below. Um, there's the back. So the color work goes all the way around, goes down to the sleeves, which are kind of bracelet length. 
Um, yeah. So I really loved knitting this sweater. I've been wearing this one quite a bit. Um, even though it's a worsted weight and on the heavier side, even in here in L even here in Alabama, it hasn't been too warm. It's very comfortable. And I think it's because there's like some positive ease. So it's not sitting right up against my body. Um, and the sleeves are a little bit shorter. So there's plenty of um, ways to stay cool and warm at the same time. So this sweater is gorgeous. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. This is the same. These are the same colors she used in her design. So this is, um, yeah, pretty much what you'll find if you go to the, to the Ravelry page. So that's my mosaica. I think that's the last Olga pattern I have to show you for now. <laughs> I don't have any other ones on the needles. I've got plans when the book comes out, but that's it. Okay. If this little segment seems out of order or if the lighting looks different or what have you, it's because I got to the end of recording and realized I had another finished object I forgot to show and it's a sweater, so I'm not going to leave it out. <laughs> So this cardigan is called Posey by Marsena Kolacek, I think is her name. Marsena Kolacek, is that right? Uh, it'll be down below, of course, and hopefully on the screen. But this is the Posey cardigan, and it's beautiful. I knit this from Treehouse Knit Sequoia Sock in the Dusty Mallow colorway, which was one of her winter tonals that she did. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to show this before I put it on my body. It is a positive ease cardigan with cropped sleeves. There is lace around the shoulder and the back. And then down here at, uh, around the bottom of the sweater. This is a very, very gorgeous lace pattern. Um, perfect for this colorway, I think. This is a two ply sock weight yarn and I was a little bit concerned that the ply of the yarn would change the overall effect of the lace, but it really didn't. So I am glad that I went ahead and made this in this color. And the buttons on here are handmade oak buttons from Idlewild Clay. She was very sweet and sent me, I ordered four. She sent me a couple of extra, which I thought was very kind. And so now I have some extras to use on other projects. Um, this took about two and a half skeins of yarn. When I initially ordered the yarn from Treehouse Knits, it was her first update of her winter tonals, and I only ordered two because the yardage requirement for this pattern, I think it kind of alluded to for the size small, only needing two skeins. I ended up having to order a second, a third one when she did her update, when a couple weeks later she did the winter tonals again. Um, unfortunately, that skein, and this is my fault, I should have bought three to begin with, that skein was a different color. Um, you can't see it a whole, whole lot, but a little bit. It's a little bit more on the brown side than the original color. You can kind of see. This one's a little bit more mauve, and this one's a bit more brown. But it's on the sleeves, and I don't think it's quite super noticeable when you're wearing it because of the lace and what have you, so it's fine. It ended up being okay. You can tell, but it's it's not terrible. Um, this is something I have not wet blocked. I steam blocked it. Um, the reason being that so I knit the size small and I got gauge but it ended up being a little bit bigger than I wanted for what I plan on wearing this for so if you see the pattern photo um, the way that she's wearing it is very cropped oversized but flattering where it hits the waist with something like a dress kind of absent-mindedly it uh, knit knit almost an extra inch on the body so it's already a little bit longer um, and then the ease around the waist was still even though that comes down a little bit farther on my hips it's still a bit bit more ease than I would have liked so I plan to knit this again in a, another color and this time I'll do the extra small I did also have to change the sleeves so <clears throat> so as per written the sleeves for this were absolutely gigantic um, they were really huge. So I ripped out, I knit the entire sleeve and was not happy. So I ripped it back out and I altered it by picking up quite a few, uh, quite, quite, a, quite a few less stitches around the armhole. I also went down one or two needle sizes from the recommended or from what I was getting gauge with. 
so I, I did fewer stitches and smaller needles. And then I ended up with a sleeve that was better for me. Um, I, I did detailed notes on my Ravelry page. So if you want to look through those, you can to get an idea of how I adjusted the fit. And now I think they're perfect. Um, I saw other people's project photos and they didn't seem to have any issues. So I'm not sure if it was just that this size of the sweater was just too big all around. That might have been it. I should, I maybe, maybe if I did the extra small, I don't know what the sleeves were like for that. Maybe those would have fit without adjusting, but regardless, it was an easy adjustment. I just had to do it. I'm going to try it on. I wasn't thinking about the fact that I'd be trying on this cardigan, so I didn't wear an undershirt that is the best for this cardigan, but I'll show you anyway. So here's my posy. It's a little bit wrinkly because it's been thrown over the back of a chair. This lace is really, really beautiful. So it is quite pretty. Um, I do very much love this. I think overall I get the achieve, you know, the, I get the effect that I was going for. Um, but again, there is quite a bit of additional ease. I really wanted this to be, well, it's my fault for knitting it a bit longer. If I hold my arms up, that's about where I wanted it to hit is more there. So I shouldn't, I should have been more careful not to add the length. Um, not that this isn't cute, but again, it's just not what I was intending with this garment. So it comes down a little bit lower. I think it'd be more flattering if it was up here. I want the positive ease, but just a little bit less. Like, I think this would be perfect. And that's me gathering an inch or two of the fabric. So I will try this pattern again, um, with the extra small and just see how it goes. And if if that doesn't seem quite right, maybe I'll knit the small again, but go down a couple of needle sizes. Um, I'm going to experiment. Now that I have one, I don't mind if the other one takes a long time if, it, if I end up with the garment that I'm looking for. So yes, that is my posy. Um, <clears throat> the way that it's knit is really fun. You start with just a small section of the, so you do a provisional cast on, if I remember correctly, you do a small section of the placket and then you pick up the provisional and then you do uh, some of the placket on the other side and that is at the back of the neck. Um, and so then after you have, you have about like this much length or so of the placket, which is the ribbing that goes down here. And then you start to knit each of the shoulders. I think it's a very interesting construction. Um, I will say that this pattern is written so, so well. There are definitely some trickier design elements, but she writes it in such a way that you're not having to second guess, like, is this correct? Because I've never done anything like this. Um, <clears throat> if you just follow to a T what she says to do um, in the order in which she writes the pattern and everything, it's really simple. Um, something else I liked was each size had its own PDF, so that way, so like for instance, I knit the small, there's no competing numbers that I'm having to try to remember which, which number is for my size, <clears throat> no adjustments with the charts, each chart is included with your size. It was just a really nice experience to knit, <clears throat> to knit a pattern like this. Um, the, the only part where I was like, oh, I hope this goes well, when you knit the lace, because it comes over the shoulder, there's shaping and, and whatnot included, you actually knit a portion of this lace and then you have to go through the lace and pick up each stitch and match it up to finish out the lace. That's the only part where you have to really be mindful of <clears throat> making sure you're picking up the right stitch um, so that the lace is continuous. And I think I did a pretty good job. I, I've looked at it, I can't really see any places where it doesn't look correct. So. I followed her instructions. She said she recommended maybe laying the chart out in front of you and just thinking about it that way. So it really didn't take a very long time, but it was a more mindful experience of picking up stitches. So that's my posy. You know what? I think it looks cute with my frog skirt. 
everything works with the frog skirt. <laughs> so this sweater, this is the last sweater I'll show today. Um, I still have other finished things, but is that four or five sweaters, I think? Five? Five sweaters? It's been a while. Um, this is Light Rain by Hohi Locatelli. The yarn for this is Darnaceous Fibers in the Salta Fingering Base um, with the Zombie Saurus colorway. And I have one entire skein, untouched skein left that I wound up because I thought I would need it. I don't. Um, but this is the yarn in the skein or in the cake. And so I used three full, practically no leftovers, three full skeins for this pattern. I'll stand up and show you. So it has a split hem detail. There is a lace pattern that goes down the front of the sweater. There is a drop shoulder. The sleeves have thumb holes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's lace on the sleeves. And of course there is a cowl neck, a very lovely cowl neck. Um, and there's positive ease. So it's like a tunic style, almost tunic style pullover. Um, this also looks okay with my frog skirt. I'm glad I got this frog skirt. <laughs> so yeah, that's my Light Rain by Hohi Locatelli. Um, this was the one I finished most recently and I'm obsessed. I, I knit this, I think I started this February 9th and finished it with blocking and all, I think February 18th. So I was dedicated to finishing this project. Um, this is yarn that I, I bought back in November. Uh, Maggie from Yarnaceous was having a, I think it was maybe her Black Friday deal. It was like a sweater quantity of a colorway of your choice for $80. That was, it was four skeins of yarn, your choice of colorway for $80. That was a really good deal. So I, I got this back in November and I, I received it, I, I think middle of January, some, something like that. Um, and so it came into my stash and left my stash. I, I tend to do that usually, except for maybe right now a little bit, but yeah, so I'm really, really happy about this. Um, I love the way that this, the fabric um, came out with the color, with the, um, the, the stitches, everything about this is beautiful to me. So I did get gauge with the recommended needle, so I was able to do that. Um, this is size two, I, I wanna say. It's the second size. Um, there's really not much else I can say about it. I, I did change the order of the knitting just slightly. So, okay, so I will talk a little bit about the technical details of this pattern um, in case you're wondering if this is a beginner-friendly pattern. I think this is an adventurous beginner-friendly pattern for sure. Um, it does call, you start off with two provisional cast-ons, one for each shoulder, because you knit, um, I think it was part, you knit the back to a certain length first, and then you pick up your provisional cast on, knit some of the front, and this is because you're getting shaping in here, and it is well worth the effort. And then you join in the round eventually, and then you knit the body, um, and then you're supposed to knit each sleeve, and then you pick up your stitches for your cowl neck, but I wanted to be able to try this on because it was top down. Um, my thought was if I go ahead and knit the cowl, it will the drape and the fit and where it's all sitting will make more sense if I go ahead and knit the cowl and then try it on that way. So after I got to about here on the body, I went ahead and picked up and knit the cowl and I really liked doing it in that order. So I don't think you need to wait until the end like the pattern suggests. I think that was just, you know, something has to come last. So that just that's just, I think, what she chose to do. But don't worry about trying to do things out of order. No big deal. So, yeah, um, the drape is so pretty on this. It's the perfect, like, it feels like a lightweight sweatshirt, but it looks more elegant than that. It's just really lovely. I want to knit a second one because I love everything about this. Um, I will say when I first knit this, the neck was a little bit more like a turtleneck, like a big bulky turtleneck. And I kind of liked that. Um, 
when you block it, she recommends blocking it this, you know, uh, width-wise versus length-wise because it doesn't really need, you're knitting the length that you really need. You just, she wants you to um, widen it when you block it. So I did do that. I didn't do it tremendously because I didn't want to totally lose this uh, because I think this is cute, but not the most flattering on me because I have a very, I've got some little chipmunk cheeks. So sometimes when you cut off my neck, it looks a little bit silly. And that's just my personal opinion. Um, but so I'm, I'm kind of glad that I blocked it out the way that she suggested. This is how hers looks in the pattern photo. So I think it all came out just right. Um, super happy with my light rain. I've been calling this my dinosaur rain since it's yarnaceous fibers. And by the way, can, can we talk about yarnaceous real quick? Because Maggie of yarnaceous has become like my favorite yarn tire. So yeah, I'm, I'm super in love with her yarns. Um, very much, very much. Okay. Let's see what time it is. Oh goodness. Okay. Let's move on to some other finished objects. I think I'll put my gnome sweater back on. Okay. Coffee. I'm getting cold. I think I just drank a fiber. That's great. I love doing that. All right, let's talk about a big one. You might've guessed, <laughs> maybe not, but I finished my Twists and Turns by Stephen West. I finished this um, the middle of January, so it's been done for like a month and a half now. And I'm so thankful because I, I really hated this project. I do love the finished object, but I am in the camp of despising knitting this. I really did not enjoy it. But it is very beautiful. So all said and done, I think mine measured 17 and a half feet wide. <laughs> and that's with me sort of um, accidentally and on purpose modifying the width of it. Um, so the yarn for this, these are my hand dyed yarns. My colors are wood fire clay is the lighter color here. Something is really weird with my lights today. I apologize. It's a very overcast day. So I'm relying on my light setup and I can't get things quite right, but you get the idea. Um, the purple is plum tree and these are both Merino singles fingering weight yarn. And then my accent color is ginger carrot cake and that's on a 75, 25. Um, that's one of my favorites. That's one of my best sellers in my shop. Ginger carrot cake and blue velvet are my two best selling colorways and Aura. Um, so yeah, that's twists and turns. Um, of course I did an early bind off. I'm not going to go into great detail because if you watch knitting podcasts, you may have seen this. Um, but I, yeah, so I did the early bind off. So just that little strip of the purple, the, um, I cord and I just tacked down all of my loose loops. I thought about doing some tassels, but I was kind of just done with this project. So I didn't, <laughs> I do think this is very wearable. Um, people have kind of said that, that they're not sure how to wear it or if it'll look good. And I understand that for me, I really like this and I think it's wearable. I think it's a lot of fun. This might be one of my favorite patterns that Stephen West has done. I, I love graphic art, um, like graphic art designs like he does and other designers do. They're not as wearable for me, but this one I think is just, just perfect. So I love the look of all the different layers once you have it on. Of course, there's different ways you could wear this. This is just me throwing it on. But I think it's, it's very pretty. I think it also really depended on what color palette you went with. I think because my color palette is, this is like my favorite kind of color palette, like purple and orange and peach and those shades. But I have, I did, I have seen some projects where the colors are, if I had chosen them, I don't think I would have liked the, fi the finished object. So I think that played a really big role in what this ended up looking like. Um, the 
cable section is my favorite. I love the cables. I love the little I-cord loops in there. So yeah, that's my twists and turns. Big fan. <laughs> Hated knitting it. Really did. Would not knit this again. Not at all. Another finished object. A quick one. I knit two pairs of these since I last saw you. One I sent as a gift to somebody and the other I knit, I knit these second for myself. So I blocked theirs. I have not blocked my own. So they're a little bit messy looking, um, but I love them. They go with this sweater because again, I, I mentioned earlier, this is the same mushroom motif from this. And so I like the way that they kind of mirror each other. But these are the Magic Toadstool Mitts by um, Stone Knits. And they're so cute. When they're blocked, they look better because the white speckles come out more so. So I need to go ahead and block mine. They need a wash anyway. Um, but yeah, these are really, really great. I love them so much. Okay, so the yarn for this is Knit Picks Stroll, which is a fingering weight yarn. And the um, color work were just just the red and white fingering weight yarn I had. Um, the red may have been this red. I don't remember. I think this red is actually from my Knights Who Say Knit Shawl. Regardless, they're beautiful. There's a sock pattern as well. I have that pattern. I plan on making a matching pair of socks with this last ball that I have. Yeah. And actually, I couldn't find one of these until just now while I was recording. You may have if I left it in, you might have seen that moment of realization where I was like, oh, there's my other one. So I thought I was going to have to make another one, and thankfully I don't, because I found it. So those are my mittens. There we go. Okay, I think I only have one more finished object. This one's like a half finished object, because I need to sew on her white spots and knit her overalls. But this is the Fawn by Barrett Woolco. Is that, that's not Claire Garland. Susan B. Anderson. I think it's Susan B. Anderson. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but it's it's that designer and it's their yarn company who creates kits for these. So I got a kit. I've been trying to get one of these, uh, get a kit for a while. Usually when they come out, I don't have the money to just buy a kit. Um, so I was glad to get this one. Um, so I knit it right away and it's lovely. It's going to be for my daughter when she's older. For now, it's just going to kind of maybe sit around in the shop um, because it has the beaded safety eyes and I'm not ready to give that to her yet, but <clears throat> one day when she's older, she'll have it and it'll be finished. It'll have, I have the yarn caked up. It's a really quick, quick knit. So I just need to sit down. I could do it in a couple of hours, make the overalls, but it's like a light pink, uh, wool and you knit the overalls. Then there's a red that you make a scarf. Um, and that's pretty much all I have left to do. The only other thing is it comes, she gives you these felt sheets for sewing on details. Um, so I need to, it's supposed to be like a white spotted, um, I think maybe like a cotton tail. I'm not sure, but it's a, it's like a little fawn and super cute. So I just need to sew on a couple white spots for a couple of extra little details. Um, I love the shaping in here. These designs are very clever. She has you knit in pearl bumps as you're creating like the body and the head and whatnot. And that's where you go and you pick up for details like the arms and the uh, legs. It's knit in the round, so that's really nice. I love that <laughs> with this. Um, yeah, I. it's just, it's adorable. Clearly, it's, this is my aesthetic. Like, I just love animals and garden creatures and just, yeah. It's also stuffed with wool. Um, I had some wool that my mom got me as a gift when we went to the Smoky Mountain Fiber Fair last year, and I decided to use that instead of polyfill um, because I wanted this to be like truly something special and it is and it's so extra soft like polyfill has this horrible squeaky kind of feeling to me and so I'm really happy with the way this turned out um I had a person come to a knit group here and she was like aghast that I was using wool and she was like that's such a waste and I could see why you might think that for me I thought it was a perfect idea so I'm happy with it but yeah that's my fawn love this little baby you know what? I have some works in progress to show you. So this is like a little something I was gifted. My my lovely mom bought me this. It's like an, a Japanese knot bag. And this is from Uniquely Yours. I got this in Atlanta when I did the um, Biddy Knits Fiber Arts pop-up at the brewery. My mom 
came, my whole, a lot of my family came and it was really great and they helped me with my daughter. And, and if I met you there, I was wearing my gnome sweater, a lot of people were like, oh, I'm so glad to see it in person. If I met you there and that's how you found me, then hi again. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, this bag is really cute. I've been using it every single day since I was, since she gave it to me. So in here I have a couple of projects. I tend to do that, stick everything all in one. Um, I have a quick little, I worked on this for a day and then I stopped working on it because I, oh, and I just pulled it off the needles. I don't have time for this. But this is the Knit Picks Felici yarn that I got um, when they were doing one of their sales and I bought all of my other Knit Pick stuff months ago for the sweater and whatnot. But anyway, this is, oh, now I can't remember what this is called, this colorway. I'll show it later because I have it, but it's, it's really pretty. I love this color palette. I'm down on the heel and I just need to finish this quick sock. I like wearing hand knit socks, but I don't love knitting them. They're enjoyable, but I really like to knit garments. So whenever I'm knitting a sock, I, I get this feeling of, oh, I could be knitting a sweater right now. That's just me. Okay, so this sweater is Sawyer by Sari Nordland. A very, truly beautiful design. Um, and for hers, she used the Hedgehog Fibers Tweety yarn, which I very much wanted for this project, but it would have been three times, I think, the cost of this yarn. So I ended up going with this one and I'm really happy with it. This is Haiku Suenyo, uh, Suenyo Tweed. And this is the, it's one, it's like the silver colorway. Um, I since, since started knitting this, I carry this yarn in my shop now, but I don't have silver. I've got three other colorways um, to choose from. And if I were to pick a color for this again, I would have picked Comforting Cream, which is one of the colors I, I carry. So I think that all of the moss stitch and the cables and everything would show up just a tad better than on this darker silver base, but still gorgeous. You can still see it all. Um, and the reason why I think it would make a difference is this yarn is a high twist. So some of the detail, I think, gets a little bit lost in the twist of the yarn. So I think a lighter color, the cream color, would have worked better. Um, but as you can see, this is a, I'll have put up a, a picture so you can get a full idea of the pattern. But this is moss stitch and cables and baubles. And it's all made with this tweed yarn. So it's really beautiful. Um, I'm hoping that this is coming up on the camera very well. But when you see the picture of her pattern, I'm sure you'll get an idea of what this will look like. It's, I don't know what part is my favorite. My camera's really not wanting to focus today. But this is truly just stunning. Um, this is a bottom-up pattern. It is, so it's a DK weight yarn. Um, I've got a US 4, so 3.5 millimeter needle on here. And yeah, I'm really excited. I think this is going to be beautiful. This yarn is made with wool and bamboo. And then of course the, the man-made fibers for the Tweety Neps. And this tweed, it's all like hot pink and mustard yellow through. So exactly what I love and purple. So yeah, I, I love this yarn very much. Um, it has this beautiful springiness to it. So when you first start knitting with it, you're like, oh, this doesn't really feel at all like wool. And it kind of doesn't because that bamboo um, is such a, it's such a dominant, even though it's the lesser fiber content, it, I guess it changes the hand of the yarn quite a lot. So this feels very different, but it's very springy. Um, so I think this will be a very nice sweater, um, won't be too warm. So I think I can wear this for quite a bit of the year. So I'm really looking forward to this. I think I'm at about eight or nine inches of body. I have to reach something like 15 inches before I separate for the sleeves. I might shorten it just a little because I have a shorter torso. Um, so we'll see, I'll just try it on as I go. A little bit harder with it being bottom up, but I'll figure it out. So that is one of my whips. There's the yarn and a cake. And my other whip this is the only other one kind of worth showing, is a coloring book raglan by Amy Schur. This was, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I was knitting the weekender with this yarn and I ripped it all out. So that was like a skein and a quarter. Um, so it wasn't too much, but I've already, if you were worried about that, that was two days ago, I've already knit back up to the point where I ripped out all the yarn. So we're kind of back where I started. And I'm very, very happy I did so because I, 
the weekender is a cute pattern but i am i don't super love garter stitch for a garment i really love the look of the v's and the, like the just the nature of knitting stitches or knit stitches and stockinette and how they look um with this colorway in particular this is my aura colorway on merino worsted and i'm really happy i decided to rip that out also my gauge lied so in the beginning, I was knitting a size two. I've knit that pattern before as a size one. I wanted a little bit more ease this time, but I got to, I was like two or three inches shy of separating for the sleeves as a bottom up pattern. And I realized that it was really large. Like you could fit maybe three of me in there. And so I thought I, I should check my gauge again. And I checked it and it changed a lot. So the sweater ended up much, much bigger than it, it was meant to be. So it wasn't an issue with the size or the pattern. It was the gauge changed. And um, yeah, I knew that I'd be unhappy with the, the finished object because I have a couple of sweaters that I have finished that after blocking, there's so much ease that I, I don't like them. And I've been thinking about ripping them out. So I've got two sweaters in mine in particular, my Ari Alice by Jennifer Steingass and one of the Love Note sweaters I did in the Yarn Hero DK weight. I think I'm going to rip both of those out and knit them again, even though it's time consuming. I love the yarn and I love the pattern. So I want to be able to wear the object and not have them be so big that I feel uncomfortable or, you know, whatever. So this is the coloring book for Acklin is my whole point. And I am very much in love with this pattern. I just this morning separated for the sleeve. So I did all of my um, raglan increases. This is size two of the pattern. And I started this the evening that I ripped out the yarn. Um, so this has been quick for the yoke. Uh, I can't brag too much because it's, it's the size two. So it's not like there's, you know, tons and tons of stitches, but there's a good bit. And I don't think I've ever done an actual raglan sweater before. And I have to say, I'm really liking the look of it thus far. Of course, the raglan um, lines look beautiful. That is a detail that I love, but the shaping of it and the size looks really nice. The neckline, the collar is like a twisted rib, so there's lots of structure. I love the way that the colorway is knitting up. I've, I've knit this before a couple times, but never a full sweater for myself. So I'm very excited. Um, there's short rows on the back to lengthen, um, of course, to make the back a little bit longer. And you can kind of see that now that I've adjusted it. So yeah, I'm really excited. Um, there's many different ways you could knit this pattern. You could omit stripes. You could do multi multiple colors of stripes. You could do some really thin stripes, some big stripes, a combination of the two. You know, it's really up to you. There's a couple of sleeve options. My plan is to do view B, if you've seen the pattern, it's the second photo. So it's the cropped length body and the sleeves are also cropped, but they have no decreases. So, um, they're even bigger than this, but the, there's no fitted collar. It's just, there's zero decreases as far as I can tell. I think I'll be doing that. And I think it'll be a really cute silhouette and unlike anything else I have, I think I'll be doing my stripes in this color. Um, this is a messy skein because my, one of my cats got a hold of it at some point, but this is Wool of the Andes in the Rebos Heather. Um, I think this will be, see this cut the R, R colorway. There's lots of ways that you could pair this. I didn't bring any other ideas out. I just found this one this morning and thought this might be the winner. It's like a rusty kind of red color, but I also have gold. I have pink, um, all, all different colors that work with this. So I'm, I'm can't decide. I'll figure it out. I'll probably knit a whole stripe and see what I think and then go from there. So next time I will have, um, probably this, I'm sure this will be done. This will probably be done in just a couple days because it's worsted weight. So it's, it's relatively quick. So yeah, I'm really loving the way that this is going. I think this will be very pretty. Okay, my next cast on, and I might go ahead and wind this up now that I'm finally showing this on camera. I'm going to do La Prairie by Hohi Locatelli. That is her, one of her newest patterns. It's a, uh, a color fade cardigan with bobbles and it's beautiful. And I've been planning on knitting the What the Fade by Andre Maury with essentially this palette but as much as I love knitting shawls, I don't wear them a whole, whole lot. Not enough to justify using this color palette in my mind. Um, I, I do plan on knitting that because I still have other sets of fades I could put together. But 
when I saw Hohe's pattern, I knew that was perfect and that was it. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, it calls for five skeins of fingering weight yarn in a fade. And this is my plan. Unfortunately, the lighting is kind of blowing everything out, but um, I'll show you hopefully a little bit better here. Yeah, the light is not doing justice to these yarns. Um, I'll show you one by one. So I'm going to go from light to dark from the top to the bottom. So my first color is this La Bienna May that I got um, when I went to Rhinebeck in 2021, but I got this at Charlotte Yarn when I was driving home. So this is the, um, this is Merino Super Sock, so 75, 25, and the color is Fiori. And it's a very subtle gray with um, speckles, there we go, a little bit, speckles of pink and peach and different colors in there. And I think this will be a very lovely starting shade. And then it will fade into, I think this is Cassiopeia, Tangiopeia. Again, Merino Super Sock. And obviously there's electric orange and pink and deeper gray, but some of those lighter shades as well. So I think I, I bought these together to go together at some point and I'm excited to finally get to use them. So I think that'll be a really fun one. And then my next shade will be Golden Hour by Biddy Knits. So uh, kind of still bringing in like the pink and the orange shades from the La Bienna May, but introducing some blue and oh, there's like deep purples. This is also a 7525. This is a sock yarn. Some gold and yeah, just lots of lovely colors in this one. And then because of the blue in here, I'll introduce this one, which is Summer Goth by Lambstrings, one of my most favorite dyers. Um, and I'm not super, uh, a, very much a blue person, but for this fade in particular, because of this one right here, I think this works well. And then my last color is going to be probably, I might swap this one out for a lighter shade. I'm not sure, but this is also Lambstrings. This is Nocturnal. Um, these are both sock yarns. And so, yeah, I think that'll be my fade for La Prairie. Okay, I'm excited to have shown that because now I feel like I can actually cast it on. The last thing, yarn-wise, that I'm going to talk about are things I've been purchasing. So we're going to go very quickly. It's been many months since I was here. So there is a good bit to show you. I will say that, again, this has been over the course of months. Some of the stuff I've brought in, like the for my for my light rain, I've already knit it. Let's talk about it. So I have these yarns from Shibui Knits, which I'm sure everybody knows by now. Shibui is no longer... Um, producing yarn. I think that they are maybe still in business, but with a whole new, um, a whole new structure. So I think they're doing like home things. I'm not quite sure, but this was pretty fairly discounted. Um, so I got these and I'm going to knit the Kutar Beret by Sari Nordland. I have the pattern. I'm going to cast that on really soon. This is Shibui Knits Pebble, and this was, I don't remember what they call their lace mohair. It didn't come with a label for whatever reason, but that's what this is. And um, it's a silver color. This is one of the most beautiful mohairs I've ever seen in my whole life. It's so soft, and the color, it is really, it, it glows. It does. It's beautiful. So I'm going to hold that with the Shibui Knits Pebble. Um, this stuff is amazing. I had never seen this before, but I love it. It's 48% recycled silk. 36% fine merino and 16% cashmere and it's very light. Um, it's considered a light fingering. There's 224 yards per 25 grams. So that's definitely a light fingering. Um, I don't see the color way. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Silver, just silver. <laughs> and these are made in Japan. So yeah, that's going to be a Kutar beret, ideally so I can wear it with my, <laughs> my gnome sweater and feel like a fancy cottage princess of some kind. When I was in Atlanta for the fiber arts pop-up, this is amazing. This is a polymer clay stitch marker that um, the Rare Pearl made, makes. And it's my, just about one of my most favorite possessions. It's adorable. The bite out of it looks so realistic. It's like a, yeah, it's just a little pink donut. It's beautiful. I'll have her, of course, linked below with everybody else. Um, but I love this. She showed this to me when I went months ago just to go to visit 
and she said she'd have them this time around and she did and so I scooped one up um, and then also there was Garden of Eden Fibers Hillary I think she was super cool she is a burial specialist archaeologist I love meeting people in the yarn business because nobody is ever just a yarn salesperson or dyer <laughs> everybody kind of has like their other thing and so she is a an, um, a burial spe specialist I think she's done digs and stuff she's an archaeologist um, but these are Garden of Eden fibers this is cloud Surrey silk in the color winterberry um, yeah 50 grams 328 yards these are baby Surrey alpaca and mulberry silk and the colorway is beautiful and I just realized I have another finished object and I didn't show it I have to try to take additional footage and show that later oh my goodness okay and then Ryan yarn was there and we did a trade so I he took one of my skeins I took one of his this is his twist sock and this is hand dyed in Athens Georgia this is called ocean soul so I plan to knit something for my daughter out of this color now this I can't remember if I've shown I don't think so but these are yarnaceous fibers and this was a, another sale that she was doing around the time that she did the sweater quantity sale for mystery skeins. So I got two, and they're both the salt of fingering uh, base. This is Roaring 20s, number two, Roaring, haha. And this one is First Sight. Yeah, really lovely. Um, these are 8515 weights, by the way, uh, content, which is why my Light Rain is such a beautiful sweater. Yeah, these are my mystery colors, and I was really happy with what she picked out. I am also doing her 2023 Paleo Botany Club, which is a monthly club where she does um, colorways inspired by Paleolithic botany. So that's really fun. I'm not going to attempt to say, well, I'll attempt to say, this is probably not how you say it, but this is based on Shania Ten Tenuis or Tenui. I'm not sure, but this is also salt to fingering, and yeah, it's lovely. So that's my... Uh, that's my January Paleo Botany colorway. Uh, when I placed my Knit Picks order months ago to make this sweater, they had a lot of Felici on sale. These were maybe $2 a piece, so I got two of each of these colors. Um, the one I showed you earlier that I've been knitting on is called Beatnik. It's Beatnik. So that's that color palette. I also have two of Mango Lassie. That one's really fun. And I think I'll knit some of these as gifts. This one is friendly skies so these are very pretty so the next set I'll show you these are for me to knit the panda from the wild animal friends book I think it's what it's called I showed it the last time my mom gifted me that book it's a bunch of different animal doll knitting patterns um, so I'm going to knit the panda my plan was to cast it on as soon as my fawn is done it's it's sheepies yarn and these two are 78% cotton, 22% acrylic. This is the stonewashed. So this is going to be the panda's body. There's like this heathered gray. It's called black onyx. And this one is moonstone. So that's the panda's body. And then she has on a really cute dress with a, a coat. It looks like a pea coat, but I'm going to go for like a raincoat sort of design. So this will be her dress. These are the katonas. I think these are pure cotton. 50 grams 100% mercerized cotton so this will be the dress with I think there's a little bit of color work so I got a pale pink and some gold colors um, and then for her coat or maybe maybe this is the coat because I wanted to go for more of like a classic yellow raincoat look so this will be the dress it's like a turmeric ginger kind of color with the pale pink so that's for my panda and her clothing and I have also something quite exciting to show so Treehouse Knits has also become, quickly, in my top three favorite dyers. I have another finished object I forgot to show that I'll have to go grab and show. That one's made out of Treehouse Knits. And then Long Dog Yarn and Treehouse Knits decided to do a Lord of the Rings collaboration for um, colorways. And I didn't get any of the Long Dog Yarn. I had my eye on the Treehouse Knits. She did, like a, I think, three colors. So I got all three colors and I ordered them on the sport weight base because I'm going to knit the rose cardigan by Andrea Mowry which is a sport weight pattern and it's like a four color faded cardigan so that's two faded cardigans I'll have this year but they're completely different so it's fine so I don't have the other three yarns from treehouse knits here to show I made a collage of what it'll look like I'll put that here um, 
So I'm waiting on those to come in because again, they're a pre-order, but my fourth color is going to be this one. And this is from La Vie Anime. This is peanut butter and jelly on the sport weight base. This stuff, this is like the best yarn I've ever felt, I think. This is amazing. Um, it's really beautiful. And unfortunately, when I bought this, she only had two in stock on her website. And I needed three, but I tend to have overage on yarn. So my thought is, I will just start with the two and see as, you know, as far as I can go. If I have to dye up a sport weight yarn that provides like a fifth colorway for the transition because it's a fade, obviously it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm not super worried. Hopefully this will be enough, but just in case, um, I will dye up an extra skein or something uh, along that nature to finish the cardigan. So stay tuned for this. This I think will be one of my best makes of the year. When you see the other colorways I'm doing, they're all beautiful. I really love this one. I think this is, I read this was one of her first ever colorways. Um, yeah, I can't, I just, uh, it's amazing. Um, I got a couple of little stitch or needle stoppers from Lindsay of Simply Serving, who is such a doll. And she had some gnomes and mushrooms. So I got this orange set and the other set has a purple mushroom with like a gray gnome. So yeah, I, I just, are you seeing a theme? Because I am. Gnomes and mushrooms. Oh my. I'm going to call that all of my acquisitions that aren't already knit into things. And I'm going to go grab that other sweater. And probably by the time you see this, I'll have cut the footage back in with my finished object. Segment. I should be back at the end of the video now. Um, this is a long video. I tried to keep it as concise as possible, but I had five or six sweaters to show. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Paper Crane Yarns news, if you're still here for this por this portion. I um, have a ton of new stuff in the shop, and yeah, um, I've, I've been growing very quickly. Um, we have, there's fiber in my eye, we have a store expansion coming up, so eventually this wall won't be here because this will be a hallway sort of thing that leads to my other, the other half of my shop. Um, so I'm going to be in this next building here. Really excited. There's lots of natural light in there. It's a nice big open space. This current space, there's a wall right here. And then there's a big room behind it where I do my knit groups. I, I dye the yarn, I sew, but it's, it's sectioned off by this wall. So my storefront is quite small in comparison to the whole building um, because I wanted to leave this wall in and utilize it for um, retail space and separating like retail space and design space and all of that. But this will be a nice big open space. So we'll start to do our knit groups in there. And then that space back there can be more of like my messy, like this is where I produce things and my child hangs out, all of that. So looking forward to the store expansion and to get started, I've just been bringing in as much inventory as possible. I, I carry sadness garn, which is very exciting. I love sadness garn. I have Sunday, double Sunday, KOS or coast. I'm not sure which you say. Um, and I have alpaca so far. I plan on bringing in others, but I have a lot of colorways to choose from with those. Um, I have the petite knit, Sunday and double Sunday colorways, most of them, or some of them, whatever's been available to order. Um, so there's lots of amazing patterns that you can make with Sunday and double Sunday. The alpaca by Sadness Garn is like the softest yarn and the Coast or KOS, it's like a blown yarn. So there's lots of, um, beautiful pullovers and vests and things you can make out of that and accessories. I have, I have, um, Schopel wool. So I've got the Zauber, Zauber ball and Zober wool, which is the, so I've got fingering weight and DK weight Zauber ball. I also have some haiku yarns. I have their concentric cotton, which would be great for baby blankets. I have the Sueño tweed. Um, yeah, I have tons of really good stuff. I have Delic bags. If I didn't mention that in my last episode, I've got Delic bags. Um, I've got lots of my hand dyed yarns behind me. I'm preparing for my next show, which will be the Smoky Mountain Fiber Fair in Townsend, Tennessee, April 21st and 22nd, I think are the dates. It's a Friday and a Saturday. I'll have that website link below. Um, so I look forward to seeing some of you there. And we, we do, if you're local, we have a free weekly knitting group on Saturdays here at my shop from 12 to two. Um, those are really fun. I love 
the ladies who come, um, Jennifer of the Crafted Pearl, we've got Tammy, um, Cheryl, I've got Deisha, um, yeah, lots of beautiful, fun people I just love. Um, I'm still planning on, I've been saying this for a year, setting up like a Zoom knit group at some point. I haven't done that yet because I've had my hands full, but eventually that's the plan because there's a lot of you I would love to hang out with and you don't live here. And I get that because, um, Yarnaceous, Maggie, she had a pop-up at a shop in Utah and I was like, I wonder how long it would take to drive there for this pop-up. And it was over a day, over 24 hours. So I get that. Sometimes we all want to hang out with each other, but we're separated by distance and time zones and different things. But, um, yeah, so I hope that you are making amazing stuff and that you're preparing for spring. This is my favorite season. I just feel so full of joy and energy and excitement because we'll be gardening soon. We've already started. We're having a fall spring in Alabama. It's been in the seventies all week in the eighties. Um, so everything is coming up. The daffodils are everywhere. The dandelions, which I love because I love to harvest dandelions and um, eat the the greens and then roast. You can roast the flowers for tea and it kind of tastes like coffee and it's really good. Um, so I'm excited about foraging and we, I have some Crown Princess Margaretha roses coming for one of our archways. Those are David Austin roses. They're like a tangerine color, which is my favorite color of rose. We've got two of those coming. Um, our other Arbor roses, we've got New Dawn, which is like a pale pink color. Those are coming in really strong this year. All of my roses are coming in really strong. We did lose our jasmine, which was over the arch, which was sad because those are pretty cold hardy plants, but we had some very, very cold temperatures in Alabama that unfortunately actually killed the jasmine. So we're replacing that with roses. I, I'm not super upset about that, but I do miss the jasmine. Um, I've got my gladiolus bulbs already coming up. They're not flowering, but they're growing. My peonies are coming up. Um, of course, we're planting all of our edible garden beds. We've got tons of food uh, prepared. Like, well, we've got tons of food that we preserved from last year's harvest and even the year before that, but we'll have lots more to look forward to. I'm excited for tomatoes. We're doing some um, like black tomato varieties. Those will be really fun. Yeah, just all the gardening. My only other, oh, we got wisteria. We got lilacs. We haven't planted those yet. Um, yeah, prepare for all the gardening footage. That's that's what we do. And um, my other creative goal that is not yarn related is to finish my Mandalorian armor. That's been on the go for a couple years. I happened to get pregnant at some point and so then I didn't fit it anymore. Um, so we kind of gave up like working on it, but now we're going to hopefully finish it. I got some, the rest of my components. Now I just need to finish putting it together. It's kind of, the hardest part is like figuring out a way to strap the armor to the suit. Um, so yeah, working on that. And then we're going to do like a knitting Mandalorian session um, photo shoot. Looking forward to doing that. That'll be really fun. I'm hoping if my armor's done, I'll have a May the 4th event at my shop. So we'll do like a Star Wars knitting related. I don't know, just hang out. Maybe I'll play Star Wars on the TV. Something fun, okay? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. That's about it. Um, if you have any questions for me, maybe if you have any questions you want me to answer in my next episode, um, leave them below and I will try to remember to answer those questions. Um, thank you for watching my very flustered episode today. Um, I feel good, like energized and happy to be back and hopefully I can keep this up, but not super sure what my schedule will be like because my, of my husband's work hours and gardening and all of it. But I'm going to try to come back every two weeks. We'll see how it goes. Um, I think I'm almost at my two year anniversary, so that'll be fun. Um, I would really love for my goal this year to be to hit a thousand subscribers. I'm hoping that I can just achieve that. Then I'll feel like, all right, I've done it all. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go prepare for my knit group today, hopefully. I've got some people coming out and clean up the shop and all of that. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Happy knitting. Bye.